Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look and trying to answer a simple question, although it does not have a simple answer, and the question is, why is it that everything in our universe, including galaxies, solar systems, planets, and even asteroids, seem to be always spinning and always rotating? Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So, galaxies spin, solar systems spin, and planets also spin. Everything seems to rotate no matter where you look in the universe. Everything seems to have this propensity and predisposition to just kind of spin around and rotate. But why? Why is it happening? Well, I guess the why part is kind of difficult to answer because that's really the physics that are causing things to rotate but one of the easiest to uh, one of the easiest ways to imagine this and to actually visualize how for example our solar system started to spin and why it's spinning in this particular counterclockwise direction where even the planets with some exceptions are actually even rotating in a similar rotation a similar direction as well the way to visualize is by using a simulation where we can actually start with nothing spinning and wait for things to collapse and then see what actually happens. So the way that things work in our universe, due to the physics um, and due to something called momentum, um, when you basically try to collide two objects, if they don't collide perfectly face to face, if they actually collide with just a bit of an inclination, like for example, instead of colliding perfectly straightforward, it collides right here. Uh, this will, by itself, create a spin. And um, this happens on molecular level, this happens on galactic level. And so here I'm going to collide two objects that are actually not spinning. So this is Mars and Earth, and none of them, none of them have any rotation whatsoever. We're going to decrease this a little bit. And even though they're not spinning right now, as soon as Mars collides, because it's not going to collide directly the center, because of this, it's going to give our Earth a bit of a spin. So you can see now that Earth was not spinning before, but now it has um, a bit of a rotation, rotational speed of six hours. And this is actually, wow, this is very close to what it really was like when a Mars-like object collides, collided with early Earth and uh, from this, all of this, a uh, moon was actually created, and the rotation of Earth at that time was about six hours uh, per day, or one day was about six hours long, which is kind of similar to what I've just created here. So there you go, this is your early Earth and early moon creation. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to a slightly larger scale and visualize things um, to kind of simulate what it would be like during the creation of a solar system. So. A long time ago, specifically 5 billion years ago, there was a supernova right in this region somewhere in our galaxy, and that supernova created a lot of material. And from this material, something started to kind of coalesce and come closer together, and ended up creating our, our solar system. But we're going to take a tiny part of this, a very, very tiny part of the supernova, and uh, we're going to use a simulation known as... Um, collapsing momentum test. We're going to actually start it paused, going to go in here, and this is a, just a bunch of Marses. And each Mars is going to represent, you know, a particle or a chunk of particles together, just on a bigger scale. We're going to make sure that none of them are actually spinning. We're going to go in here and hold all velocities and all rotations, meaning that every single one of these Marses now has no rotation. It's just kind of, you know, a big chunk of particles together. And from this, we're going to see if any of this starts spinning. So they're going to collide with each other, they're going to collapse on each other. And there's the first collision is already happening right here. And as this occurs, more and more objects will start combining together and create momentum. And as they start spinning, due to the conservation of momentum, uh, if things become bigger, they start spinning slower. If things become smaller, they, they start uh, spinning faster. But let's see what actually happens. So, remember, this: none of these were spinning in the beginning. 
and we are basically trying to create something that might look like either a solar system or um, an initial planetary system. So here you can already see that there's like a ring spinning around, which kind of even looks like a very early solar system with an accretion-like disk from which the planets were formed. And everything is already spinning, even though nothing was spinning at first, because not, uh, all of these objects collided in uh, with each other in a not a perfect fashion, they created spin naturally. And there is another ring that's forming. And this kind of gives you an idea that if you were to have trillions and trillions of these particles, it would very likely form something that resembles our solar system. Now, this is obviously very, very simplified, but let's just accelerate time and see what actually happens to all of these objects when they cool down and when they kind of stopped colliding with each other. So we're going to accelerate this a little bit more. You notice how some objects acquired orbits around other objects. There's something else happening in the back there. There's actually a binary planet. And all of this really kind of gives you an idea of what happened on uh, minuscule scales in those larger supernova as all of these particles collided and collapsed on each other. So here we've established what seems to be a planetary system with several moons orbiting around it. Then there's a binary system there and everything is already spinning. And we can even take a look at each individual object here. And you'll notice that pretty much everything is spinning with the exception of these objects that never got to collide with anything. I think these objects actually got to escape the system, but everything that received any kind of a collision started spinning. So this whole spinning thing just happens naturally. You don't even have to do anything. As long as two objects collide and it's not a perfect face-on collision, they create this, they create the spin. And here we have uh, a binary system, which is very unusual, binary planetary system with two moons. And we can actually, okay, never mind. There was a binary system with two moons, now there is nothing. They collided with each other. But we can actually take a look at all of these um, various orbits by taking a look at the orbits here. And let's see if we can maybe visualize them a little bit better. So this is another system here that has um, several objects orbiting around one another as well. And so with pretty much very minor exceptions, everything here is in motion. Everything is already spinning and rotating. And this here is the biggest of these objects. This is the biggest planet we were able to create at 1.11 masses of Earth. And you can see it has quite a lot of things rotating around it. So this whole rotation thing is essentially a natural component of everything in the universe. Now this happens on molecular level, this happens on uh, object level, human object level, and this of course happens on planetary, galactic, and universal level as well. So no matter where you go in the universe, as long as there's momentum involved, as long as there's any kind of a collision uh, that happens with objects, you will end up with a spin. And with time, uh, because of the way that gravity always tries to minimize its action, and because things in nature always try to minimize force, this will actually flatten out and create a flattened solar system like this, because this requires the least amount of energy. This right here, the flattened plane, is because it's the best shape to have for all of the other gravitational forces to kind of cancel out and have a stable system. But this is something we might want to talk about in one of the next videos, because this video is getting a little bit too long. So even when two galaxies collide, as we saw in the beginning of this video, even two rotating galaxies will actually end up in uh, creating something much larger, much more beautiful, and also still spinning just as much as it was before. And even things like black holes spin, so even when two black holes collide, they'll still be spinning and producing quite an unusual effect. And so anyway, so hopefully now you know a little bit more about why or at least how the objects create spin in the universe and why it's always going to happen no matter where you go. At some point this galaxy will either flatten out or become an irregular galaxy and will then continuously spin for the rest of the eternity. Although with time, if you wait long enough, chances are even the spinning objects will actually stop. 
because everything in our universe actually is slowly slowing down. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn their video games and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's wait a little bit and see what happens to this galaxy. You can kind of see it's already fighting out a little bit. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.